Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series and in this video we're going to be looking at cloud professional certification and uh, the role of the IBM Center for Cloud Training in providing IBM Cloud certification. So um, when I go to uh, various meetings and I, I'm meeting customers or I'm meeting people for the first time, uh, this is quite often a slide that I throw up or a slide very similar to this which kind of gives you, you know, people an idea of, of who I am and, and what my experience is. So, you know, I go through the usual things of, you know, talking about how long I've worked in the industry, uh, the different kind of roles that I've had, if, if, if it's appropriate, um, and, you know, when I joined IBM, how long I've worked in cloud, and also my job role. So my job role at the moment is uh, I'm actually the CTO for the IBM Center for Cloud Training. So, you know, full disclosure there around, around my actual job. And uh, but basically, this is this is the kind of thing that, that you know I often throw up. But as an alternative, I could actually throw up a slide that looks like this. So um, so this is um, a slide um, which basically shows the different IBM Cloud certifications that I hold. So this actually gives people uh, a much better idea of you know what my verifiable skills are. So. They can straight away see that you know I'm a I'm a, a, a certified cloud architect, so I'm certified at professional and advanced level as well. Um, they can see that I'm a technical advocate. Um, see, I'm a developer as well as a sales engineer, um, and um, as well as a cloud advocate. So, in some ways, this 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 slide and uh, these certifications actually give people a much better understanding of exactly what my skills are uh, and exactly what my knowledge is. And again, that's because I've got these certifications which have been in, well been verified through taking an exam uh, by IBM Cloud. So, um, so this all comes around really by earning IBM Cloud certifications. So, if you're interested in in doing this, and, and hopefully lots of you out there are, then the way to do this is via the IBM Center for Cloud Training, or ICCT, which actually offers um, completely free cloud training. Um, uh, specifically for passing IBM Cloud certification exams. Uh, the exams themselves, as well as the training, are designed for, for specific job roles as well as specialties. And um, as I say, all of the training is really developed to help you become IBM Cloud certified. So a question I'm often asked is, you know, why should I become certified in the first place? And, you know, this is a this is a really good thing because, again, you know, it does take some time. It takes some effort and also has some costs of, uh, associated to getting certified. The, the certification exams, you know, you do have to pay for the certification exams themselves, even though the training is free. So quite often there is a, a big question, you know, why should I become certified? You know, why, why can't I just carry on as I am? So there's four really good reasons really for getting certified. So the first one really is just, you know, it enables you to really demonstrate what it is you know. So if you think about the uh, the, the slide that I showed a couple of moments ago with all my badges on, all, all my certification um, badges on, then, you know, that really is a good um, demonstration that I have some deep skills in IBM Cloud, as well as a, a width of skills, a depth of skills and a breadth of skills within IBM Cloud. So it's really showing what I know to somebody else. And sometimes it's easier to, to do that through a certification because you can you can show your um, your qualification in, in an email, you can show it on a website. So sometimes it's easier just to show your credentials rather than try and explain to somebody, you know, what it is that you know, because that can, you know, take quite a lot of time and they're still not sure. So by taking the certification, you know, you've got that qualification, it's been verified by by IBM. So again, it's showing what you know. And in turn, that inspires confidence as well. So you have confidence in yourself that you know this stuff because you're able to pass the exam. But it also inspires confidence in the people that you're working with and alongside. Uh, and that includes your employer as well as customers as well. So, you know, they have confidence in what you can do because, again, you've got this qualification. So it's really important. The next thing is that it can also really help develop your career as well. So. I've always um, developed my career by learning and uh, you know learning the next thing that I need to know to, to, to get to the next rung in the job ladder as it were. So again, you know taking certifications, doing the learning and taking the certifications can really help dem uh, develop your career because again you're demonstrating to your employer or demonstrating to the people around you that you have that knowledge and therefore you can take that career step. So you know even if you're, you, you don't know too much about cloud, by becoming a cloud advocate, for instance, 
you're demonstrating that you have some cloud knowledge, which is really important. Or maybe if you, you know, you're a little bit further on and you become a cloud advocate, uh, a cloud developer or a cloud de um, architect, then again, you're showing that you're ready to step up to that particular level within your career. And I think lastly, it also helps you get the most out of cloud as well. So because you have uh, through the learning, you're getting a bit more depth in the various services and you're getting some idea of how those different services work and fit together. You're also then able to use those services in a more um, productive way as well. So, you know, I think we're all probably guilty of, of, you know, using the tools that we're familiar with and doing things in a certain way. By taking the, the learning and, and taking the certification, you also have that, in, you know, confidence to actually use different services, you know different services, so you're able to get more out of the cloud that you're actually using as well. So those are four really good reasons to actually get um, certified. So you're probably asking what certifications IBM actually offers, and uh, so this is the, um, the slide that I usually use uh, when trying to get that across to people. So we, we so ICCT um, develop uh, new certifications as time goes by as well. So this is a, a current snapshot at the time I'm recording this video. Um, but we kind of work on this kind of pyramid basis, I suppose. So down at the bottom, we have the uh, introductory cloud skills, and that's covered by our IBM Cloud um, Advocate certification. So these are for people who, um, who are perhaps not particularly technical, but they need to know something about cloud uh, within their job. So, um, so project managers, program managers, uh, people who don't really have too much experience of cloud. So the course gives you a good introduction to what cloud is, some of the basic cloud models, some of the basic cloud services as well. And again, it gives people that surety that you, you know and understand enough about cloud to, to get going. Uh, perhaps you've got a little bit more technical experience, um, in which case maybe a technical advocate is a good place to start for you. Or if you're already an advocate, you know you might want to step up to a technical advocate role. So again, this is a really good way to turn any existing technical skills that you have and technical knowledge you have into um, skills that are a little bit more cloud facing. Uh, and we have one there for site reliability engineer as well. So if, you, so if you're into um, looking after systems, then um, you know the SRE advocate exam is quite a good way to, to give you some cloud skills that, that will help you look after some cloud um, applications as well. In the middle there, we have some uh, job role um, certifications. So I've already talked about uh, professional certified architect and developer. We've also got SRE, so site, site reliability engineer, um, as, a, as a professional certification. And we've also got sales engineer as well. So if you're a business partner or an IBMer, um, you can take the sales engineer certification and uh, training and exam as well. It's not available to everybody. Uh, but these are these are job role based certifications. So again, if you if you've got ambitions on those particular job roles, or you're already working in those particular job roles, then those certifications are, are, are really good things to have. Um, we then have a, a bunch of specialties. So specialties really focus on particular areas of IBM Cloud. So, for example, IBM Cloud for financial services, um, security engineer, uh, IBM Cloud satellite, and DevSecOps. So those are particular function specialties, as it were, within, within IBM Cloud. And financial services and satellite in particular are particularly um, popular at the moment. With, for, for, so we're seeing quite a lot of uptake in those particular certifications. And uh, coming soon, we've also got the IBM Cloud for VMware, as well as IBM Cloud for SAP as well. So those are, those are that's new training and courses to look out for towards the end of uh, 2022. Uh, and then right at the top there, we have uh, Advanced Certified Architect as well. So again, if you're an architect that's been around for um, a while and you want to show you've got those more advanced skills, then you can go for that Advanced Certification. And again, watch out for, for more um, advanced certifications coming soon as well. So those are the different certifications that IBM offers. So I think there's something there for everybody. And uh, I hope that whets your appetite a little bit. So if you are interested, um, then you can sign up today and uh, you can just go to ibm.com slash training slash cloud and you'll find the IBM Center for Cloud Training and all of the training courses uh, that we offer. So again, it's all completely free of charge. Um, there's no uh, sign-up fees uh, and there's no costs to, um, to uh, enrolling on a course. Um, as I say, the only cost really that you'll come across is when you actually take a certification exam. 
and those are proctored through Pearson View and hence have, have a charge. Uh, but again, if you want to do the training, then go to ibm.com slash training slash cloud. You'll find the IBM Center for Cloud Training and all of our certification uh, material is there. But we also have um, something called the uh, Cloud Prep uh, Revision Web App as well. So, um, so this is a really great site if you're, if you're currently studying or you're close to taking your exam and uh, because this is a really good revision site. So what you have here is um, all of the, uh, the different courses that we offer and uh, you can see a few on, on, the, on the screen there. We've actually got a, a few more on there now. Um, so basically what you can do is you can uh, click the particular um, course that you're taking and you can then access uh, things like revision flashcards as well as a whole series of uh, practice exam questions as well um, uh, to, to obviously test your knowledge and those are those are really good things to do. So if you're interested in that then uh, go to ibm.biz slash cloud-prep um, or you can scan that QR code there as well and that will take you to, um, to the cloud prep um, web app. So last of all, um, I thought I'd take you through a few hints and tips just in case you're um, you're thinking of taking uh, a course or you're already doing so. So um, so these are my top tips really. So first of all, make time to actually study um, for, for your exam. I know that sounds uh, sounds fairly obvious, but uh, believe me, um, quite often I've, I come across people and they just say to me, "Well, I haven't got you know time to do any of this." Really, the, the easiest way to do that, you know, we're all in hopefully in charge of our diaries. Um, the best thing to do is actually block some time in your diary, you know, make a meeting with yourself in your diary. And that means that, you know, no one else can then come along, hopefully, and steal that time from you. So it's only half an hour a day or maybe half an hour, two or three times a week, just to give yourself, you know, some time to actually go and do some study and do some revision. It really does help. And, uh, you know, lots of people I've spoken to said that was a really good tip. The next one is actually to book the exam. So, um, so there's two schools of thought on this. Um, some people like to go through all of the study and then book their exam. Um, personally, what I like to do is start the study and then actually book an exam for maybe in a couple of weeks time before I finish. So it kind of adds a little bit of jeopardy, adds a bit of a target for myself. So um, either way, um, you know, don't leave it too long before you do actually book an exam because the problem is that um, you know you've you've done your learning, and the longer you leave it, you know the the, the more likely it is that you're going to forget what you've learnt. So um, so really a really good tip is to to actually book the exam, give yourself a target date, and uh, you know give yourself something to work for effectively. Um, also think a little bit about where you'd like to take the exam as well. So you can either, as I say, all the, all the exams are proctored through Pearson View. And you can either take the exam at a test centre uh, or you can actually take them remotely now as well. So by remotely, you can either take them in an office space or you can take them at home as well. So I've done one at home. Uh, the main thing really is to uh, have an area which is uh, nice and tidy. Uh, make sure you haven't got, you know, you've got some desk space, you haven't got papers and things um, cluttering because, you know, the, the examiner will take a look at your working space just to make sure there's nothing there. Uh, which uh, you know can distract you, or, or um, you know maybe you, you know maybe some notes around that kind of thing. So, so, um, so it's really good because it's nice and flexible. So if you are quite a long way from a test centre, um, or it takes you a while to get to a test centre, then taking it remotely is is a really good option as well. Uh, third tip on there is make full use of the materials available, including the Cloud Prep app. So that's quite important. Um, basically, when the exams are created, um, we also create the, uh, the, the uh, uh, learning materials at the same time. And believe me, there's an awful lot of work goes into making sure that everything that is on the exam is covered within the, uh, the learning materials. So, um, so if you do go through all of the, the learning materials, you will be able to answer all of the questions on the exam. Nothing is hidden. So, uh, so again, my advice is to you know make sure that you go through the uh, through the learning and go through the cloud prep app to give yourself the the biggest and best chance of passing the exam with a really good score. Uh, the last thing on there uh, in the in that first section is use the practice test as well. So there is a practice test available. Um, it uh, tends to be the same number of questions on the real exam. So it's either sixty for a say uh, for for most of the exams or forty for a specialty. Um, and they're all, the questions are all written by the same people at the same time 
as the real live exam. So, uh, so if you want to have a really good um, insights to what the real exam might look like um, and how you're doing as well, you can take the practice test. So it does cost $30 to take the practice test. Um, but again, if you pass the practice test, then you know that you're ready. Um, if you fail it, um, then it does give you some insight as to which sections you're scoring on and how you're scoring on. So again, it gives you the opportunity then to drill down and uh, maybe look at the bits where perhaps you can pick up a few more marks. Uh, so on exam day itself, um, I think the main tips there are to remember to use the time that you have in the exam. So every exam is about 90 minutes long. So, you know, that's actually quite a long time. Um, I think most of the exams I've taken, um, I tend to be able to get through in about 45 minutes. So it gives me, uh, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes towards the end. And, you know, just make sure that you use all of that time. So don't rush the questions. Don't feel too pressurized by not having enough time. You really, really do have plenty of time to, uh, to, to read every single question thoroughly and, you know, make a, uh, make a, a good assessment of which uh, answer is the correct one. So they're all multiple choice. Uh, but remember, you know, make, make sure you use the time that you have. Uh, and again, I've already mentioned, take care to read and understand the question. So again, the questions are, uh, are written by um, SMEs. Look for keywords in the question. Quite often the clues in the question as to what the answer is as well. And remember, there's no trick questions either. Well, every question is uh, very straightforward. Um, it, there's a there's a definite answer to each one. We we don't write tri trick questions. And again, if you're not sure about an answer, then the best thing to do is actually mark it and then go back to it at the end. So there's a way to mark a question, uh, and then at the end, before you actually submit all your answers, you do have a chance to go back and review the answers that you've made. So again, use the time. Make sure you go back and answer any questions you're not too sure about. And if you're really not sure about the answer to a question, sometimes it's just best to go with your gut. I think most of us probably look at a question, uh, we probably have a good idea in our minds as to what the answers are. So if you're really struggling, then again, my advice is just to go with your gut. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into IBM Cloud certifications. Again, if you do want to go and try out an exam uh, course for yourself and then maybe a certification, go along to ibm.com slash training slash cloud. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope that's been useful and we'll see you again next time.